Football is a dangerous sport. Hey, Peters! When you get hit several times. Olsen and Olsen. Does anyone care? I, I can't make people care, but people should care. I'm Jean Marie Laskis, and I'm I'm the author of Concussion, as well as a series of stories about this issue. And Jean Marie, what I think is so interesting about the doctor himself is that he didn't even care about football. No, he didn't even know about football. This all began as a result of doing some some research with my editor about this issue of concussions in football. What I ran into was um, this mysterious name, Bennett Umalu, who had done a lot of the science, he showed up a lot in the science journals, but he did not show up in the New York Times and all of the other places that where journalists were writing about this issue. So my question was, what happened to this guy? What happened to the scientist who had cracked the code? Why has he been left off and where is he? I was really um, fascinated in the fact that he had been so marginalized. He completely marginalized. It was bad enough, but that his work had been dismissed and that the NFL specifically tried to more than ignore it, disprove it. The magazine article in GQ came first, and um, it really was kind of an investigative story of what happened to this guy, what was his research. And it opened up so many questions about these players and the fallout of people not knowing Bennett's research and what it showed. So the idea was then to expand it into a book. What ended up happening, as really, as this whole thing starts unfolding for me personally, and I start realizing what's going on, is I have a hard time. Like, what happens is football's not fun to watch anymore. I know what's going on behind the scenes. My favorite players, you know, Troy Polamalu and Heinz Ward and all these people I love watching. The problem is I know what's what at risk for them. I probably know it better than they have been even told. So it is not fun to watch. Since this story came out, you see football player after football player, you know, get CTE. You see younger and younger people get CTE. So I don't know. My, like, we tell the story, and is anyone, does anyone care? I, I can't make people care, but people should care. People like Julian Bales, who, who offers a vision of football taking the head out of the game, um, and others. It's certainly not me. Then there's also fans recognizing they're complicit in funding, essentially, a sport that's causing this damage. And the fans are complicit in it, whether they realize it or not, and they need to know that that's, they need to know the truth, that that's what they're, that's what they're buying when they go to a game. There's an, now uh, an awareness of this as a public health issue, which there wasn't before all this. There really wasn't. So now it's a public health issue, and what are we going to do about it? And you see the NFL actually responding with some of these measures. That, that's progress. Not nearly enough, but it's progress. I am um, Dr. Jontel Pierce, and um, I work at My Neurology Clinic. I'm the practice owner there. I see patients with a, a variety of neurological conditions like um, strokes, headaches, migraines, seizures, um, concussion, um, neuropathies, anything dealing with the brain. When you get hit several times, it's like your brain kind of rattles in your, your skull and it's causing shearing, which is like tearing of your um, neurons. And um, even though you might can't see it on like a CT scan or MRI because it's so tiny and it's like, it's microscopic damage but it's um, those uh, neurons tear, and then that causes, um, they're thinking it causes some type of inflammatory response. You know how when you, uh, you hit your knee or something and then you may get some bruising, some redness, because it's like an inflammatory response going there. They believe the same thing is going on in the brain. And then when that happens, it may trigger 
like uh, what we see in like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's where the brain is like over, over becoming overreactive and producing um, this protein that we don't want too much of in our brain. So it's basically taking, if you were to take a, a and fill this up with water and splash it around. And the concussion has occurred when the water is representing your brain, when the, when the brain literally slams up against your head and then back and then before it resettles. So if you picture that and you're shaking this up and the water is going back and forth, that's a pretty good example of, of a concussion and how it affects the brain. Um, I see um, like students a lot, student athletes that come in with concussions. They usually present with like episodic dizziness, headaches. Sometimes they have personality changes, like they can become depressed for, um, a few weeks, um, they can have insomnia. So when someone basically rattles their brain with a concussion and uh, cause all types of effects, it can be mental type effects, it can be psychological, it can be neurological. So yeah, I've seen people who literally, their parents are like, oh, I've, I, I don't know who that person is. Um, they're acting very differently that happens. I think the biggest thing that's changed for me now that I have more knowledge about concussion and uh, concussion therapy is just the seriousness of it and just the seriousness of what was going on and and also looking at some of what my friends went through um, because that's that's the biggest thing I don't think uh, especially younger kids Collegiate and professional athletes probably do understand a lot more, but high school age kids probably don't understand how serious that injury can be for your whole lifetime. Interesting, I still to this day will do neurological screenings in my classes and things like that. And we will find um, little abnormalities with some of my neurologic screenings. Um, it, it's probably not noticeable because you have to get real close, but my eyes don't sit in the same spots, which is a, which is a long-term side effect of concussion. Also with people who play like in the NFL, football players, they get that CTE, the chronic traumatic encephalopathy, where um, multiple concussions can cause uh, permanent damage where they are have these personality changes and mood changes um, lifelong. Family and friends of former NFL standout Junior Seau gathered outside his Oceanside, California home in shock and grief. Again, I think you can play football safely, but again, I think, and again, that's what all this is about and why the NFL is pushing and why all these organizations are pushing CTE to the forefront. It's good, but we have to make sure that the coaches and the kids understand and are actually using this information. You know, I used to be, you know, put your face in there, drive with your head, and you'd talk about your head a lot. Now you don't talk about the head. The, the UIL and the Texas High School Coaches Association has really put an emphasis on uh, taking the head out of the game. Uh, and what I mean by taking the head out is teaching new uh, techniques, tackling techniques, uh, doing it differently than we did, say, 16 years ago. People say the referees take the physicality out of the game. I don't see the referees taking the physicality out of the game. I think they're trying to take the major injuries out of the game. Uh, with all the head injuries and concussions that are going on in the world today, we feel like it's our job to keep control so the game continues to be played. But players are still able to play where 
parents are still able to let their kids play and know that there's a comfort of safety there. We just emphasize small things and just hope and pray that they're listening to us so they don't go out there and hurt themselves. And I remember it was kind of odd. I had a coach, um, I made a easy form tackle. It was a pretty soft tackle. Like it wasn't anything anybody should be excited about. But one of my coaches just exploded with happiness because I just did a very basic, just put my head across the shoulder, wrapped him up, took him to the ground. Very soft tackle. And he just exploded with happiness. And so then it was kind of like, wait, why is coach happy? And so that kind of actually translated to a few of the other players. A young coach came on to our staff and he started talking about what they call the Seahawk tackling, the Seattle Seahawks tackling. And it's more of a rugby tackle and it's all with your shoulders and you take the head totally out of the tackle. That's when, you know, that's what we started to emphasize, your shoulder and rolling instead of, you know, driving your nose and head in there. We want the guys to see what they're hitting you never want to go into a, a pile or into a player with your head down. So what we're looking for as referee as when a, a defensive player makes a tackle, we want to make sure that he's not leading with the crown of the helmet. Make sure he's not hitting the offensive player uh, above the shoulders as a headshot. Making sure he's not launching himself, making himself a uh, missile, bullet as you call it, and, and really trying to do physical, physical damage to the offensive player. I think there's ways to make the sport safe and that's that's what the there's risk factors like for any other disease or condition there's a risk factors um, for concussion and so um, there's lots of um, intrinsic factors like age um, like body weight like build um, previous concussion history and then there's extrinsic factors like what type of sport um, how well is the equipment being used, education, things like that. I always felt like the benefits that you gain just in life in general, being a part of a team, especially a football team, outweighs the negative consequences that can come. 